Hello, folks. Tonight I am going after the Little Rosette Nebula. And as opposed to the Big Rosette that I've already done. <coughs> Excuse me. And it, it's actually called SH2-170. Um, let's see. Right now I'm capturing HA. Uh, I'm going to boost this up. I'm going to need a lot of HA on this. Let me make that up 150 for now. I'm doing... Um, let's see, four minute exposures. My gain is set at unity gain 13921. And right now, the mean readout is 649, which is where I should be on a very clear night, which is really nice outside right now. And this is probably the faintest object I've worked on yet. Um, take a look at one raw image, you can barely even see it. <laughs> but you know this is what happens when I I'm starting to run out of all the the really bright objects. I'm not going to redo the wizard, the Pac-Man, elephant trunk. I, I I've tackled that stuff enough, and now I'm moving into the the, the stuff that's a little more difficult. And this is definitely going to be a tough object. I I don't even know how much um, integration time I'm going to need on this. So we'll have to see. Let's see, I'm making this video on, this part of the video on October 15th. We'll see how long it takes me to actually finish this object. And let's take a look at my guiding. Guiding. 0.43. Wow, nice. You know, I've got, I've got some uh, new cable management. So my cables aren't just completely dangling off the back end like I used to have. It's not great, but I think it has helped my guiding a bit. And uh, we'll see how this goes. Thank All you. right, so let's see the data I've captured for now. I've this is, this is what my HA looks like after about, I think there's over a little over 13 hours here. And unfortunately, after capturing seven hours of oxygen, <laughs> That's what I've come up with. I'm like, oh no, how much data would I really have to collect? You can see a tiny bit in the center, but even if I try to push the curves on it before the combine, it, it didn't make a difference. <laughs> Rats. This object, for now, I haven't captured sulfur yet, so I'm, I thought um, I'm going to try an HOO image for now. Um, that means HA in, um, HA in red and oxygen in green and blue, and I'm going to use HA as the luminance. And I'm using, of course, the SHOAIP script that I always do. And let me show you what my combine looked like. So that's, that's what my combine looked like. And no matter what I did, I wasn't going to really bring out that oxygen in the center. I, I, I tried every, every trick in the book that I knew with pixel math and everything else in PixInsight. And my skills in Photoshop, I don't know how to just keep adding layer upon layer like I've seen other people do. So I pretty much got stuck with this <laughs> in um, HOO. But it, it, it does have a, a true color kind of look to it. And after I worked with the colors a bit, I came up with that. Now, I like the deep. That's my taste. I, I do like the deep reddish-orange color there. And it it, it, it is uh, probably more true color than it would have been if I had a different color core from that oxygen. So that's what I came up with for now for 20 hours of data. I mean, this, this was a faint object. I may still capture sulfur and... Maybe, maybe sulfur will make a big difference. We'll, we'll have to see, but I want to show you um, Eric Cole's version that I saw recently in Astrobin. Now, I had the, the little rosette in the back of my mind for a while when I was sort of searching for objects to capture, and when I saw Eric's version recently, uh, that kind of put me over the edge, and I thought, well, that's super cool looking, and he got an image of the day with it, um, rightly so. It's, it's well deserved. I thought, okay, that put me over the edge. I want to go after this object, and you can see this is in the Hubble palette, and 
uh, the core. It's really nice, and <coughs> I'm hoping that after I capture sulfur, maybe maybe a miracle will happen, and I'll get some cool colors like Eric got here. Let me zoom in a little more. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Yeah, and he's got a, he's got nice steel when you, you zoom in on it. Now the only thing is, Eric's equipment is fantastic. I mean, uh, look at the speed he's got. The focal ratio is f three point eight, and I'm at f six. So uh, let's do the math here for a second. <laughs> My refractor just can't compare here. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Get rid of this stuff here. Okay, 3.8 um, squared. I'll go 3.8 times 3. Point, oops, wait. Let me start over here. 3.8 times 3.8. Okay, 14.44. Now, my scope is F6, so that squared is 36. So we'll go 36 divided by 14.44. That's Eric's speed there. And that's how much faster his scope is than mine, so eesh, that, that makes me want to buy a, <laughs> a faster scope. Now, if you multiply that by Eric's total hours of 24, 59 hours, that, at my speed, I would have to capture around <laughs> 59 hours to match what Eric can get in 24 hours. You see the advantage of a faster scope? And I'm not even bringing into account the mirror size. He's, he's at about a 12-inch a, a mirror there, and I think my objective lens is maybe more like 5 inches. So 12 inches versus that, that's an even bigger advantage. So on top of the 59 hours. So um, that if you're ever thinking about um, getting a scope, <laughs> think about speed. Now bring that into consideration because... It, it certainly makes a difference. So, uh, and thanks to Eric for letting me um, feature his picture in uh, in my video. You know, he's one of the premier astrophotographers around that I think. And, you know, when he does an object, it's going to be done right. And he's got great equipment. And, and so if you want to uh, see an example of something done right, uh, check out Eric's profile on Astrobin. Now, let me show you a few more things here. Now, I, my setup has has been running super great. I admit, I have solved all of my issues. You know, I I was having um, spikes in my RA for a while. I how the heck do I fix that? And what happened? I took off the plastic cover, and like I don't know what I'm looking at, but I thought if I take off this cover from the RA gears and take a look at the only way I'm going to be able to know how to fix it if it's something really obvious. And when I took off the, the cover, the distance adjustment screw fell to the ground. Well, that's what I needed. It was something obvious. I screwed it back in. I fixed my RA spikes. I mean, it wasn't that good. And then I, I also had another issue where my laptop outside kept shutting down because I think it was overheating. The CPU was overclocking. And I saw that with... I. I I stopped using the laptop. I just bought a 20 meter line with my friend Jason's suggestion, ran it into my house, and plugged it right into the back of my, my desktop, and which never crashes. So now I don't have that issue to deal with anymore. And <clears throat> another issue was uh, my scope kept um, banging into my tripod legs, or cables would get tangled, and my, my guiding would just stop, the mount would get stuck, and I saw that issue as much best I could, and now everything is running smooth. I'm like, wow. I went back-to-back -back nights last night and the night before, captured nine straight hours each night, and no hiccups. I'm like, that is great. And the advantage of that is, um, just for the fun of it, around 5 a.m. in the morning, I had my system go to point to the Horsehead Nebula and just finish the night off with that while I was sleeping, and it's... It, it's just really nice that you can be sleeping and the setup, it points to an object and it does what it's supposed to do. I mean, I love it. I'm, and so, I, I, yes, I want a faster scope, but right now everything is running so smooth. It, <laughs> and let me show you what I've got with this horse head. It was just for fun to see what I could get. 
And you know what? This is just a stretch, actually. I, I stacked 80 minutes of data. And uh, this is just an STF. And look how cool that is with the horse head. You know, no processing at all. It's 80 minutes of data. Now, it's, it's I don't know, this is probably something I'm going to have to capture in HA plus LRGB. I, I'm, not a, I'm not that big of a fan of seeing this one in the Hubble palette. You know, the Orion Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula, th those are really two objects, in my opinion, that really belong in true color. So I'm gonna. That's I haven't done an HA RGB image since I did that cigar galaxy, which I thought came out pretty good. But what worries me about this object is, look how bright that star is. I'm already getting lensing on my HA, and I can even see a faint halo already around it. So I don't know what I am gonna do about that star because I'm not a fan of halos, so I'm, I'm nervous about that. And let me show you something else here. Now, I've already shown you my fossil footprint nebula, and this was HOO, um, HA and oxygen, and I knew eventually I was going to go back and capture sulfur for it, just to see how it, it looks. So I added the sulfur and did a Hubble version of it, and that's the Hubble version, radically different. The inside of the nebula looks different, the core doesn't actually look as bright anymore. So I put that on Astrovin, and I thought, oh, wow. I mean, it's such a radical difference that I'm hoping that if I go back and capture oxygen, or sulfur, I mean, for the little rosette, maybe that's going to make a big difference too. But right now, I, I, do, I admit, I do kind of like this as it looks right now. So we'll have to see. So that's all I've got for now, folks. Thanks for listening, and I will see you later.